Advanced Message Testing. Everything you ever wanted to do to test messages. Curiosity Test Data Automation is a very powerful test data management tool which includes hundreds of data generation and masking functions. It has connectivity to most tech stacks so it's easy to create integrated test data. It has a full DevOps focused RPA tool. You can perform data journey mapping, masking, creating virtual databases, subsetting, data generation, creating, finding and allocating data in databases, flat files, APIs, queues, mainframes, using all sorts of formats, for example, Swift, HIPAA, etc., and so on. But today we're going to focus on everything you ever wanted to do with messages. The same technology could, of course, also be applied to databases and APIs. So over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how to extract and mask a filtered set of production messages, how to analyze messages and create the same type of message in development, how to auto scan the latest message traffic and keep development in sync with the same characteristics, how to create a message from scratch, how to model data combinations to create covered sets of message variations and combinations, how to solve message content, in other words, to work back from the results to the inputs, how to create messages that are a time series, and how to create clusters of data inside messages. So let's get into the demo. So this is a queue of messages. Let's go and have a look at some of them. And you can see we've got all sorts of information sitting in here. This is the message that we'll be using for the whole demo. Now there's lots and lots of messages in there, but what I want to do is actually extract some and I'm going to pull them from my queue prod one and I'm going to add in a filtered query because I don't want all of the messages. So what I'm looking for is I'm only going to look for the organization type of corporation. I'm going to fire this off and this is going to scan through the messages look for the specific type of message that I want and then apply masking rules to the data as it's being extracted. So that's finished. Let's have a look at the results. And here you can see the data that has been extracted and the information that has been masked. And there's a couple of different messages there. Now if we take a look at the type of masking that we can perform. In this case we've picked up two of the fields inside the message and we have masked them. In this case we are assigning uh, a new rating and we're also adjusting the total income. Now we have hundreds of different masking functions and you can kind of see a bunch of them here and it's very easy for you to extend this to include any type of masking that you need to apply and you can also apply it across multiple columns. So let's move on to the next part of the demo now, which is analyzing data patterns, trends, and looking for differences. So we're going to scan the message traffic, select and filter data dimensions. We can look for numeric data patterns, skewness, kurtosis, which is rareness, compare environments for data density, compare message data over time, and set it up to equalize your data characteristics from production automatically into development. So before we begin, let's just have a look at some of the logistics. So this is the message that we're playing around with. Now, within it, we have kind of data dimensions. These are the characteristics of the message which we can pivot on and things that we're interested in overall about patterns of data. Now, sitting inside them is information from the accounts receivable systems and applications and also accounts payable. And then finally, we have a rule-based rating analysis. Now what we're doing is we're monitoring the traffic using Slack. Now I've set this up so that any messages that are going through production, in this case I'm just actually obfuscating some messages into Slack, and any new messages that come out in development. So as we're working on the messages we'll be able to look at these channels to see what's going on. So one other final bit of logistics, I've set up all the different scenarios that we're going to be using in the demo inside Modeler and what we have is different types of data that we're going to be creating and the one we're going to first look at is production which is using production characteristics to create data into development so let's go and have a look at that so the first job is to analyze the queue let me just put in the name of the queue and fire that off i'm going to use the prod1 queue click on execute 
and wait for that to finish. Okay, that's finished, only took a few seconds to run. Now we're going to look at the results. So we're going to load in the results. Now what you have is down the left hand side we have kind of dimensions and these are basically attributes that we care about that we can kind of pivot on. And then over here we have aggregate columns or numeric columns. So once we've loaded the data in, we can then click on process. And what we're looking at here are the dimensions down the bottom. And we're looking at the means, the medians, the sum of the total income, which is the numeric column we're interested in, the count, which is the number of those particular distributions that exist. We can also look at things like standard deviation, kurtosis, which is rarity value, and actually this looks quite interesting. There's quite a lot of rare results in there, maximums, mins, and then skewness, which is the closeness to a normal distribution. Now we also have filtering capability. So what I'm going to do here is maybe just pull out in the industry type, I'm just going to look at the financial industry. And if I click on process, you'll see that we're just focusing in on the finance sector. Again, we have the same types of information. Again, we've got quite a, an interesting set of rarity values there. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to export this out so that we can then create the same type of data in our development environment. And all we have to do is just give it a name, click on export. Now we need to decide how many actual messages we want, which are going to follow the same characteristics, which is normal distribution with the same kurtosis and skewness. And we click on execute, that will finish. And that creates us an input of specific values. And we'll end up in this case with 500 messages. And those messages are gonna mimic the same characteristics as the data dimensions that we were looking at in production. Now we're gonna go back into modeler and we're going to pick our profile production characteristics, click on execute. Now what we need to do is to choose that prob one exploded 500, which is the 500 message characteristics that we need. We're going to move them into the development queue and I'm just going to click on execute. That will create the messages with the same characteristics and we can then go over to Slack and watch the messages being created. And here are the messages coming through and we're going to end up with about 500, slightly more than 500 messages being created in our development environment. Now, in the meantime, if we think about it, over in production, there are messages coming through. Now, what we're going to move into now is the ability to keep an eye on the production messages and actually analyze them as they're coming in and then take the characteristics of the new production messages and push those into development. In other words, we're going to keep development at the same state in terms of the data characteristics and density as production. So to do this, we just simply click on analyze the latest production messages and that will fire off a job. So that's created our analysis files. We've also analyzed the development environment. We can load that up and click on process. And this is showing us the differences between the latest stream of messages and the information that we have in a development environment. And you'll also see here that what we also have is missing values in, which allows us to compare the characteristics of data in one environment and another. Uh, in this case, we're obviously looking at the latest messages that have come through. We've kind of segmented them off, but you could compare different environments, QA1 and QA2, and kind of equalize messages from both ways, backwards and forwards. And then all we have to do is export those missing characteristics type in a name, click on export, and we can then go over to Modeler and create the missing data directly inside our development environment. Now this is showing you it step by step, but obviously we could set this up as a batch process so that your production queue would be being analyzed and then the information of any missing messages could be pushed over directly into your development environment. So we're now going to move on to the second part of the demo where we're going to create a message from a basic message into a template and out into a model. Then after that, we're going to model out data combinations to create covered sets of messages, giving you all sorts of varieties of messages using the power of modeling. So here is the original message. And what we do is we convert that message into a template, which looks something like this and we've removed any fixed values and we've parameterized them up. At the same time, we will also create a basic model for you, which we're going to use to build out the variations of the different types of messages that we need. So here is our very basic model. We're setting the values, 
We're pushing it out to CSV and then we're generating messages like so. If we look at the assigned statements, you see it will pick up the values that we had in the original XML message, but obviously we're going to model these out in a bit. All you have to do then is just go to generate tests, go to tests and click on generate. We're going to just generate some messages. I won't put them on a queue yet. Click on execute and there's the results and there's the message that we've created using Modeler. Now we're going to move into the world of more sophisticated modeling. So we are now back in the model and we're going to look at spread by type. And what we've done here is we've done a little bit of variations on the profit, so it's a loss and profit, different corporations, different types, LLCs and corps, and then taxation rates and uh, the state, which is Arkansas, like so. And we've also set total income. Now, if we look at the different paths, what we're actually doing is creating different variations and combinations here, and there are actually nine of them. Uh, you can vary this using our various coverage techniques. In this case, I'm going to pick up all of the variations that I care about. Now, if we go and look at the assignments and we look in here, you can see that actually what we're doing is we can also decide how many um, types of corporation, how many types of LLC that we're going to create, and you can vary these as much as you like. Now, we have our tests already, but I'm interested in a very low rate of tax. So I'm just going to copy that and create... I'm going to vary the model a little bit here. I'm just going to come in like so, and I'm also going to put that in a different state. Set it to 2%. Let's go and have a look at our assignments. And we'll change the state to Arizona. We'll join that back up, and we're now going to generate some more tests again. And we now have 11 different variations and combinations. Obviously, we've added in now this additional test case where we're moving down through very low taxation into Arizona. Now we fire that off. In this case, we're going to move it to the message queue dev one and click execute. And now we can see the messages starting to come through onto our development queue. And you can see that each path is actually creating multiple messages. And that's finished. What we'll see down the right hand side, we've just tagged up each one of the messages, medium size, large companies, the different ratings that we've assigned them and the different values. You can see that it's very easy to build out various combinations by simply dragging and dropping blocks and assigning values and then generating the new variations and combinations and then pushing them out directly into the message queue. So I'm going to switch gears a bit now and talk about message solving. Now there are many algorithms around that can solve problems and there are different types of algorithms, assigning tasks, bin packing, traveling salesmen, scheduling, networks, etc. In this case we're going to use linear optimization. So we're going to use Message Solver to work backwards from the results and create the body of the data. It's a bit like chemistry. Atoms work their way up to RNA and then to DNA, and the fragments of RNA make up the DNA. So what we're going to do is start with the required answers and work backwards, possibly sideways. And it, when you see it in action, it is actually magic. You can use it to create multivariate data. You can use it to create integrated data. You can also use it to filter out rarer data, for example, in problems like fraud detection. So before I get into details about how we use the solver, let's just look at the basic scenario we're creating here. If we look at the assignments, we're totaling up all of these columns into our total income. So dependent on the values that those are set to, we will then come out with a total income. Now, if I want to, on the other hand, set my total income to a million, and then we look in here, what we have to do now is we have to adjust all the other columns. So we have to take the total income and we then have to subtract it away. So that really isn't practical. So we need to come up with a better way to assign the expected results that we care about and then work our way back up through to the body of the data. So what we're doing is we will pin our profit range, our total expense range, and our total income. And then using linear algebra, we will work our way back up through filling in the operating profits and then off up into expenditure and into income. So based on just those three pieces of information, we can work our way back up and populate all of the information which will then calculate up and roll up correctly with valid data with your expenditure solved and your income solved. Now the way that we do that is creating a pack of constraint rules. So all you have to do for the message, spend a little bit of time and actually put in all the calculations, all the ranges that you care about. Now you can also 
introduce external variables. So here what I'm doing is I'm playing around with the taxation rate. I've put in some fixed values, but again, you could model these out if you're interested, if you want to see what the effect on the calculations as defined by the constraints that you've introduced. In effect, what you're doing, and this is a, a very simple example of a simple formula, is that you're creating valid data in here, you can also force infeasible data. So by adjusting the values uh, inside here, you're actually going to be creating data inside and outside the feasibility. And when Solver runs, it can create you either feasible or infeasible, depending on how you've set up the constraints. So you adjust the constraints each time you filter or make messages. You can model your rule variations to predict results. And of course, you can create multivariate related data. As you can see, all the variables are related to each other as defined by the constraint rules. Okay, so let's see this in action. So what we've got here is some assignments and we're not really doing very much. We're just assigning the total income, the taxation rate, the profit, and I'm also in this one creating some other operating expenses. So all of the rest are going to be in effect calculated. So if we go and look at the tests and there are nine different variations. Now when I submit, what I need to do is to actually just run the message solver. And what I'm gonna do is point it at our constraint rules, which we looked at before. Now what I can do is if there are any infeasible messages that are created, they will be ignored. You could switch it around and create a constraint pack which is going to create a lot of infeasible messages if you want to test your validation and do the reverse. But in this case I'm just going to move them to the message queue and fire it off. And here you can see the new messages coming through and the job is complete. Now I'm just going to go and look at some of the internal files so we can see what the solve was actually done. So on the left hand side is the very very raw data that has been put in. And on the right hand side, once it's been run through the solving algorithm, you can see it's populated all the various fields that would then be pushed on into the message itself. So in that example, I was basically running through the solver, just solving it. But what you can also do is blend the two techniques together. So here I've got spread by state. And what I'm doing here is that I'm actually playing around with the state and the credit rating. But at the end of it, I really can't be bothered to go through and do all the calculations for the values and I'm just pushing it through the various different paths that I've already defined for the solver. So this allows me to create variations of ratings, but also I can then map those through into the values that are gonna be set up for profit, taxation, and total income. So we're now gonna move on to creating some time series data. So I've created a little model of the type of data that we're interested in. And if we look through, what we're doing is we're playing around in this case with the organization types and the location. And we're also gonna use solver and we're setting expenditures and profit income like so. But when we do the submission, what we're going to do is gonna generate some message and we're gonna pick a little control file, which is time series. Now let's go and have a look at that. So what we're doing here is for every message, we're going to explode it five times. Now, in this case, we're using the year. You're more likely to use time series data with kind of microseconds, etc. And then what we're doing is we're playing around with the increase in the rating and we're also moving up the total income. So all you have to do is create a small configuration file. When you're ready to create the messages, you just choose the time series CSV, click on execute. Here's the messages coming through. And then once the messages are created, we've just popped them into our analyzer and we can see there's an increase in the total income over, over time, again, with the median and the sum like so. So now let's look at how to create clusters of data using messages. So let's go back into Modeler and look at the swim lane clusters. All of the other messages we've been created have been up to do with one specific company's reporting. But in this case, what we're interested in is the grouping of companies. So here we're creating a parent, which has a child, which has a grandchild, which has a great grandchild. So this is the ownership structure of the companies. And then what we've also done is we've created some subsidiaries of each one of these. Now the subsidiaries, we've actually assigned them a junk rating. Now, if we go and look at the test cases, in this case, we've gone exhaustive and there are 29 different variations of company configurations that we would be interested in. Now, some of them are going to be high rating and that's fine. But the ones we're really interested in looking at are the junk ratings for subsidiaries. So now we can create the messages and we can go and take a look at them inside our analysis engine. 
Now in this case we've moved the data into Neo4j which is a graph database and it's very good at being able to look and identify clusters of information. So if we take a look at our graph, now what we've actually got here, we have different shapes of data. So each one of these is the company organizational structure that we're interested in and you can see that every single one is a unique shape. Now if we click on the current rating it's very easy to see what's going on here. We've got some very reputable companies, high rating, and then as we move around, we can see we've actually got some companies or some groupings of companies where you have some high ratings, but owning quite a lot of junk status. And then you could go down in and look at values such as retained profit, expenditure, total income, and it's very easy now to be able to understand the data that we've actually created and we could now apply our analysis engine to look for clusters of potential fraud in groupings of subsidiaries. So that's the end of the demo. So let me summarize up what we've just seen. With test data automation as part of your open testing platform you get quality. You understand what you have, you can improve it, you can also cover all the requirement combinations of valid and invalid data. Speed you won't waste time creating or finding messages. Messages throughout all phases of the project are available. And messages are available for all types of development, BI, migration, graph databases, ETL, AI, machine learning, etc. You have the ability to filter out or make black swans, look for fraud, clusters, outliers, patterns, integrated chained data, and all of that into all technologies. You can reuse and share work across teams, you can react and understand changes in pattern and adjust your testing automatically. And finally, DevOps. You can drive messages on demand into DevOps processes, containers, self-healing engines, etc. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the demo. If you want to get in touch, just send me an email at hugh.price at curiosity.software. Thank you.